Hello and welcome to another video by Geek Together. Today we'll be talking about the Apache Guacamole No Auth extension. I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of you have been reaching out to ask me if I can show you how to set up the No Auth authentication for Apache Guacamole. So in order for us to do this, the first thing you're going to do is head over to guacamole.apache.org and then you're going to go to downloads and we're going to download the extension for no auth or no authentication. If you notice, the latest versions do not include the no auth extension. So for you to get this done, we're going to have to download the 0 0.9.14 extension this is the last release that apache guacamole released the no auth extension so you want to make sure you're downloading the 0 0.9.14 so once you have that extension downloaded you want to open up the file or extract the file on your desktop and you should see the guacamole.no auth extension jar file so as of right now, if you load this file into your Apache Guacamole, you're going to notice that you get errors. The errors are going to include Apache Guacamole not being able to load this extension because it is a 0 0.9.14 extension. And if you're using the recent releases after the 0 0.9.14, it's not going to work for you. So in order for us to get this working, I'm going to copy this into a Windows machine, which I'm then going to use 7-zip to open up the file and make some changes. So the .jar extension is just like a zip file, and we can use a zip extractor such as 7-zip to open up this file and make changes to the file. So I'm going to right-click, open up the file, and then what you want to do is edit the guac-manifest.json file. In here, as you can see, it is loaded and says this guac dash no auth extension is depreciated. So the only change you need to make here for this extension to work is to change the version number and include an asterisk. This asterisk is basically telling Apache Guacamole that this extension can now work for any Apache Guacamole version. The reason why you could not load it before was because it was specified to only work on 0 0.9.14. So once you have that put in there, you can save that file. We'll update the archive. So once you have that saved, now you want to copy this file and move it into your Apache Guacamole server. So you can use SFTP to copy this file into your Apache Guacamole server. Note, you want to put this file into the Apache Guacamole home directory, which is etsy-guacamole-extensions. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So I have my Apache Guacamole lab server here, and I'm going to head over to the Etsy guacamole-extensions directory. So this is where you want to put that extension file. So once you have that taken care of, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to create a noauth-config.xml file. So in order for us to create that file, we're going to use nano, which is my favorite text editor. And we're going to create a file in the guacamole home directory, which is etsy-guacamole. And then we'll call that file or that file has to be called noauth-config.xml. Note, if you call it something else, you want to make sure you specify the name as you called it in the guacamole.properties file. I will show you that in the next steps. So once you have this file created, inside of this file, we're going to create our first Apache guacamole connection, which is an SSH connection to a specific SSH server. So as you can see here, you're going to set the config flags and the first option here for name is giving your connection a friendly name so you can remember if you have multiple connections the next option for protocol is the protocol you want to use so this can be ssh rdp vnc and so forth so in our case we're using ssh and now the host name stays host name and for the value, you want to include the host name or the IP address of your SSH server that you want to create the connection for. 
and then the next option you're gonna have to set is the port parameter which is going to specify the port for the SSH protocol that we're using in this case my port for my SSH server is 22 I'm not using a custom port so if you're using a custom port you want to change that to 22 I have a sample no auth that's config.xml file in the description section below so you can just copy and paste that when you create that file so now we're going to save this and then the next file we're going to have to want to edit is the guacamole.properties file which is your main configuration file for apache guacamole so we're going to use nano and edit this file and inside of this file we're going to add the option no auth dash config and we're going to specify the path of our no auth dot config dot xml file as you can see mine was dropped in the etsy guacamole home directory so once you have that done you're going to save and now we are going to restart our tomcat that's all you need to do so you're going to run the command system ctl restart tomcat 9 and once that's done we'll head back to the browser if i refresh this page now you can see our apache guacamole's authentication page has completely been removed now we are directed straight to an ssh login screen for us to enter our ssh credentials to be able to log in for ssh so now that we've tested that for ssh and we see that it absolutely works we've completely removed our apache guacamole login screen the next thing we can do is head over to our no auth that's config file to add more connections so in order for us to add more connections we're just gonna have to include more config so i'm going to copy and paste another config option here and this is for a protocol for remote desktop or rdp we have a different value for um, the host name or the ip address of the system and also we have the port specified in this case it is 3389 so i'm going to save that restart tomcat again and now if we refresh our apache guacamole server we should see we are still not presented with the login screen and we can select multiple connections so this brings us to the end of this video i hope this video helps you if you have any questions about the no auth extension or if you were unable to get this working on your system you can reach out to me by signing up on the geek together hub and post a new topic or you can post a comment down below in the comment section thank you for watching and please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel